Cross of the Dutchman is a tale about a large brutish man named Pierre, who is thrust into the position of rebellion against oppression. It's a fantastical story set in the magical land of... Uh, oh wait, this game is based on history? Okay, this will take some more research, let's see. Um, Pierre Gerloff Donia was a farmer circa 1500, who lived near the village of Kimsworth with his family. A civil war was being fought between factions, and in order to help try to suppress it, the Duke of Saxony dispatches a group of mercenaries known as the Black Band. The Black Band, however, were known for pillaging local villages when they felt their wages were short. The Black Band went around to several villages harassing people for protection money, essentially what we know today as a shakedown. It's only when they come across Kimsward and Pierre did they face an opponent worthy of a fight. Pierre doesn't let the Black Band harass any of the villagers, as well as keeping his own family safe. Eventually, he is forced with the reality that he can't do it alone. With the help of some of the other large fellows in the village, and some other helpful hands, Peer headed the resistance of the Black Band and the Saxons' oppression. After some unfortunate events, Peer finds himself with no choice but to thrust himself fully into the rebellion, to save his land, to avenge the dead, and to free the living. So, with a little black story, let's start over. Cross of the Dutchman is an isometric adventure game that will have you bare knuckle of boxing against soldiers and cleaving them in two with your hulking sword. Seriously, according to history, this thing was like 7 feet long, and he was the only man for miles capable of wielding it. This thing is huge. You play as Pierre at the very beginning of his course of events, living peacefully on the farm with his family. When soldiers show up on Pierre's property, he is quick to knock them out, and goes in hopes of learning of their origin. Traveling into Kimsward reveals the soldiers are everywhere and harassing the villagers, and the story goes on from there. Fighting is the central focus of the gameplay. There are many encounters of large groups of soldiers. As you fight off more, you only seem to become more infamous and bring on larger groups of enemies. Pierce hulking arms make easy work of enemies, but you do have special moves in order to take out larger groups at once. You will find yourself buried in enemies swinging for the fences more often than not. Eventually you obtain your infamous blade, which is even more deadly and destructive. A few glancing blows can sweep away waves of soldiers, and its special moves are very fun to use. Some of the control, however, can be kind of annoying. It's mostly clicking to go places as well as click to attack. Right clicking activates your special move that is active. There are a few hotkeys outside the map, and the whole control scheme can be somewhat cumbersome. The in-game art is done very well, bright colors and lots of detail add life to the world, and wandering NPCs help build the feel of a village. The music is also quite well done. The ambient sounds help develop atmosphere, and the orchestral strings build tension at all right moments. Walking around and talking to the villagers can be an enjoyable experience, especially when they all seem to love you, but that could be just because you're 7 feet tall. During my playthrough, there were a few bugs and glitches. At one point, I even found myself spawned into an unaccessible part of the map after failing an objective. These bugs, however, were few and far between, more funny than anything. Cross of the Dutchman has a lot packed in, but that being said, it's pretty short. The main story can be completed in about 4 or 5 hours, and the ending does come on somewhat abruptly. A few side quests would have helped alleviate this feeling, but they aren't found in Cross of the Dutchman either. Ultimately, this game feels like only the first chapter in the life of Pierre Gerloff Donia with much story yet to be told. The best part of Cross of the Dutchman is how it interprets the history and legend, and incorporates them into the final product. There are several stories of Pierre doing heroic things and performing amazing feats of strength, some of which can be found and played through in the game. Ultimately, I would recommend this game to fans of the genre or Pierre Loves Donia history buffs. It's not that it's not enjoyable, it's just that some of the missions start feeling routine and stale. Cross of the Dutchman is very fun at times, but at other times, it can be very tasking. One thing is unrefutable though, Pierre Gerloff Donia was one badass guy.